Welcome to Theology Unplugged. I'm Michael Patton, and this is our 23rd session of Through Theology in a Year. And I'm on track. I think I'm doing it. I mean, I'm off track a little bit, but you got to give me some leeway. I love epistemology, or I love I love prolegomena, and I love epistemology, what we're getting into today. So I, I, I mean, I spend a little bit more time on it. I might be able to speed things up once we get to, I don't know which class I'd speed it up in because I love them all. Uh, every, every area of uh, theology, there's so much to talk about. But I'm going to try. Like I said, we're trying to get through this in one year. I've got it mapped out in my head. I'm, I'm a little bit behind, maybe about, <laughs> maybe about 10 sessions behind out of 23. But hey, that's better than I thought it would be. I'm glad you all are here. I hope you all are subscribing from wherever you're at. I hope you are commenting from wherever you are at, because I need that. I need you to comment. I need you to say something. I need you to rate it, uh, because that gets the algorithm going. The more comments you, we have, the more discussion we have, the more it gets spread. I need you guys to share it. If you would, share this. That would be wonderful. Share this with a friend. Tell people that we're going through this. Um, you know, while I tell everybody, if you've just come, and this is the 23rd session, and this is your first time here, while I do tell everybody, I'd love for you to go back to the beginning and start at the beginning, go all the way through, okay? Catch up with us or, uh, you know, just go at your own pace, whatever it takes. I would love for that, but at the same time, every one of these sessions is somewhat independent, uh, at, least, at least as I teach it here. Whenever I'm teaching the theology program, again, this is what this entire thing is based on. It's, it's called the theology program. It's 60 sessions of systematic theology. There are, there's a class with 10 sessions for each. You can get all of this at credocourses.com credocourses.com. You go there, you search for the theology program, you can find it there. And I would say get the whole thing, get the whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, get it either then download or get it in a thumb drive. That's what most people get now is a thumb drive, but get the whole thing. Cause you get the workbooks, you'll get the PowerPoints and the workbooks have assignments for you. Now I'm not saying to do that this time with while we're going through, you can, uh, the workbook will be a little bit different because I'm updating it, but I'm saying that is for you to start in your church. This is a robust discipleship program. This is something we say, all right, I mean, I've got my discipleship book right here. Uh, now that I'm a Christian, I forgot the name of it. Now that I'm a Christian, and this is 10 sessions. This I got a discipleship program on credocourses.com. That is 10 sessions, but 10 sessions... That's great start. It really is. I don't want to be down on my own book. It's a great book. I like it. I, I wrote it. I think it I think it's actually maybe right. Uh, but it, and it'll take you you know through five doctrines and five practices of the Christian faith. But here's the deal. I need you someday sometime to go through the theology program or go through through theology in a year. Start the theology program in your church. Start it in your small group. Do one class at a time. Do one session at a time, whatever you have to do, because it's it's so important, guys. I mean, theology is the is what God uses as the gatekeeper to reality. It's not the media. It's not politics. It's not everything else that's going on in the world. Theology is the ultimate gatekeeper to reality. We have to realize that. We have to spend time in it. We have to dig deep in it. We dig deep in the Bible because it's our primary source. As we saw the last, what was it, 13 times, 13 sessions, we talked about how to how to get theology from the Bible. But today we are moving on to epistemology. Um, let's see here. I didn't test this beforehand, so let me let me try to get this thing going. I forgot to I forgot to test it. That's all right. It's my it's my stream deck. My stream deck switches between everything and let's see if this still works uh there we go okay so today the, and it says session four and it says session four because that is what session you would be on if you switched in the theology program that i was just talking about session four is whenever we start talking about epistemology and specifically today we're going to talk about postmodern epistemology postmodern epistemology is 
the well let's let's start with something else let's start first with just epistemology and understand what epistemology is what is it i mean that's that's a that's a great big word maybe you've never heard it i had one person in class and i've told this every time because i think it's hilarious uh, I was in my singles class whenever I was a pastor and I was teaching through epistemology. I did not hold back with my singles. They were great. And we went through theology all the time. Um, but I said, I said, does anybody know what epistemology is? And there was a guess here and a guess there. And then somebody said, is it the wife of the apostles? <laughs> It was great. I mean, we just fell apart laughing. The wives of the apostles. No, that is not what epistemology is. Neither is it the study of the epistles. You know, that'd be a good one. It's close. The study of the epistles of Paul or the epistles of the New Testament, the the letters of the New Testament. That's what an epistle is, but that's not epistemology. Epistemology is, well, let's go to a definition here, maybe from Webster's Dictionary. That's a that's a standard book. It's the theory or science of the method or grounds of knowledge. What? That doesn't make any sense. The theory or science of the method or grounds of knowledge. Basically, whenever you're talking about epistemology, epistemology is how do you know? Now, now it's not saying kind of like you say something to somebody, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, so-and-so is going to win the election. And you say, how do you know? Because they're asking for evidence from the outside. Epistemology is not the gathering of evidence for a claim. Epistemology itself is the method of uh, uh, that we get our knowledge from. Is it from evidence? Maybe so. But epistemology is simply how. how what's the method that you know? You know something, what method do you go by to know it? What are some valid sources to uh, get your, uh, your your knowledge? Whatever you know, how do you know it? What's the method? And I love that because I think it's so important for us Christians, and I think it's incredibly exciting. I mean, talking about epistemology, I love talking about epistemology because it's so important. It, it does. It makes you back up and say, how... How do I gather knowledge? Because normally we just gather knowledge, right? We just all of a sudden have something and we look back and we don't know how we gathered it. And we, we get this method, uh, this science of how we know, but we just inherited it. This is backing up, going behind everything, saying, how do we know things? How do we know things? What's the, what's the biblical way to know things? What is the godly way to know things? Or in other words, just what is the best way to know things? So that is what Webster's Dictionary says. Paul Feinberg says in the Evangelical Dictionary of Theology, it is the branch of philosophy, and it is, it's, it's a branch of philosophy. It's what, uh, if you were to take a philosophy class in college or I don't know if they offer them in high school. I don't remember. But in college, I know they do. And if you take that, you will go through epistemology. It's part of philosophy, which so much of philosophy and theology integrate together and kind of mirror each other at times. But it's the branch of philosophy that is concerned with the theory of knowledge. Get that? The theory of knowledge. The theory. What is the? Th- what is your theory of knowledge? Do you have one? Okay. Uh, it is an inquiry into the nature and source of knowledge, the bounds of knowledge, and here we go, the justification to claims to knowledge. How do you justify your claims to even know something? So we, we do apologetics sometimes, right? We call, we call uh, we, another fancy word, apologetics. Apologetics is one of we are defending the faith and the Christian faith. Now, you can be apologist for anything. You can be apologist for the Republican Party. You can be apologist for uh, a different religion. You can be apologist like I am for Camaros, and I am a good apologist for Camaros, a very good. And I'm a good apologist for you too, not as good as I used to be, because Bono's kind of gone off the deep end sometimes here and there. But I still love the guy, and I could still defend him. Now, it's it's the it's not it's not apologetics. Epistemology is not apologetics, but it's the method by which you do apologetics. You see what I'm saying? Okay, well, we're, we're going to get into it. You'll see. 
I promise you'll see. Hang with me. Don't get don't get discouraged. Uh, it's, it's I promise it's not that hard. Okay, so let's go back over here and let's talk about key terms. Okay, there's a lot of key terms we're going to be going through. As a matter of fact, we're going to spend the entire time today just going through these key terms. And I know that this is called postmodern epistemology, and I have yet to define postmodern. Some of you may know what that is. See, I'm throwing out all kinds of big words. You wait. There's some really big words coming in just a minute. Epistemology is maybe you know second or third on the list of how big, word, big words we're going to be learning. But stick with me. I promise. Just stick with me. I'll, I'll keep it slow. This is important. We're not just learning big words to learn big words. It's because they're foundational to to our knowledge and, and God and our, our our following of him and our knowledge of him, the excitement that comes with, with theology and knowing him. So hang with me. Uh, key terms. All right, let's go to the first one here, and it is relativism. You, may, you probably have heard of relativism. Whenever you say, somebody says, it's all relative, you know, and I, I was th- in, in college. It took me to college. I promise you this. I didn't do that well in college. Uh, I didn't do that well in high school. Uh, really didn't do that well. I j- just throughout school, I didn't do well until I decided to do theology. And somehow it just kind of, all of a sudden my brain started working. Or really my my motivation and my discipline started working. But um, I, I was in college and I was taking a history class. And the professor kept on saying that is objective and this is subjective that is objective and this is subjective that is relative and this is objective that is relative and this is objective and i i was walking down the hall and i remember going up to him hey professor i said what does relative mean you know you keep on saying objective and relative and all that what does it mean and i mean he looked at me i think he had kind of a light bulb went out he's like oh yeah people don't know this uh, even in college, you don't know this. And I'm kind of embarrassed today to say that I, uh, that I don't know this. But uh, relativism is simply the belief that all truth, the well, you can't define relativism by restating it, but that all truth is relative. Now, here's the definition of relative. Relativism is, relativism is the belief that all truth is relative. What does that mean? Being determined by some group. Okay. So whenever I say this truth is relative, uh, I may be saying this is only true because you live in America. This is only true because you're in Oklahoma in the Bible Belt. That's why you, you believe it's true, and it's true for you there in Oklahoma. That would be a relative truth. Uh, some people believe that truth is relative that it is defined by the culture, by the people that hold to it, by the time span. That is that's That was true back in this day, but it's not true anymore. As if truth could be morphed and changed. This is what relativism, relativism is. And relativism, relativism is a very popular view today. I mean, people really do hold to this, thinking that truth is actually relative. Morals are actually relative. This is something that has come, and we'll see. This has come with postmodernism. This is something that develops, and I'll tell you why next time. We'll, try, we'll really try to get into more of the why, why do people believe that truth is relative? Why did it change? And I want you to understand where they're coming from. People who say that truth is relative, some of you are looking at this and saying, how can you say that truth is truth? You know, that it can't be relative, or it's not truth anymore. I want you to hang with us because I want you to understand where they're coming from. I get it. I don't agree, but I get it, and I want you to get it as well. Okay, so that's one. Some people believe that all truth is relative. Therefore, they are uh, relativistic. That is relativism. Okay, what's the next one? The next one is, come on, key terms, what are you doing to me? Okay, subjectivism. So we got relative and subjective, relativism and subjectivism. Uh, you Sometimes people use these two terms interchangeably and say relativism and subjectivism are the same, and very often they are. I don't mind that at all. But I'm trying to be very specific right now so we can see uh, all of these different epistemologies, and that's what these are. These are different epistemologies. These are different theories of truth, theories of 
reality, theories of how we know things. What is subjectivism? Subjectivism is the belief, again, that all truth is subjective. Well, what does that mean? That is that truth uh, is subjective, being defined by the perspective of some, not group, remember beforehand, it's some group, some culture, but now it is the individual. So subjective, you think of it this way. You're a subject. You are the subject here. And if you are the subject, then you are an individual. And so it is subjectivism based upon your own individual thoughts. So basically, this is kind of like relativism. Like I said, sometimes it's used interchangeably. But this one says, truth is defined by you. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. You've probably heard something like that. You may have even thought something like that. This is subjectivism basically says, you know what? You believe what you believe because your individual experience, because your individual personality, because of that, that happened to you whenever you were young. So that is true for you. I get it. That type of thing. That's what subjectivism is. Truth is identified by the individual. So therefore it is made with, it is created. It has its genesis ex nihilo out of nothing. It comes because of your experience. So that is subjectivism. Okay. What is next? Well, next we got, why does it keep on doing it that way? Okay. Uh, skepticism. Now, skepticism, that's a good one. That's an important one, very important, different than uh, relativism, different than subjectivism, although they can, they can, you know, you can hold the both at the same time. But subjectivism, I mean, excuse me, uh, skepticism, of course, that's, that's not that hard, right? I lied to you. These aren't that hard. Uh, epistemology is the hardest one so far. Epistemology, the theory of what? How we come to know things. How do you know? That's epistemology. I'll just throw that back out that you again. Okay, skepticism. Skepticism, if you're a skeptic, what are you? That's right. I mean, you just kind of, you, you, you doubt things. You're not sure. You're, you're, you're somebody who kind of holds yourself aloof from any commitments because you're, you're just, you're not sure. Now, it's the belief that uh, that it's the belief that truth cannot be known with certainty. Now this is this is hard. <laughs> this is hard. Okay, so let, look at this: the belief that truth cannot be known with certainty. But here's the here's the deal: you've got different types of skeptics out there. Okay, um, one you, you might put it this way, and I didn't put it this way here. But if you're taking notes, this is a good thing to notice and. Uh, you know, keep the difference between you've got hard skepticism and soft skepticism in epistemology and the soft skeptic skeptic says this, or soft skepticism says this. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I, I just don't know. You haven't convinced me. So therefore I remain uncommitted. I'm a free agent with regard to truth. That's kind of the soft skepticism. Okay, now let me show you the difference. Hard skepticism is when not you're sitting there saying, I don't know, you know, I'm I'm a free agent. Soft skepticism or hard skepticism says this, everybody is a free agent out of necessity. You cannot know. It's not that I don't know. It's not like I, I'm not sure about whether God exists or, you know, whether Christ died on the cross. I'm personally not sure. I'm skeptical of it, that kind of thing. The hard skeptic comes in and says, nobody can know. Nobody can know. I, I know enough to know that there's no way anybody can know. Now, the, de- the, the question at that point, we'll talk about this later, is what does he mean by to know? I mean, uh, the, the, uh, this, uh, the hard skeptic usually has some type of very, very determinative way that they have in their mind that we're supposed to know before we can say we know. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, so you get the difference. Hard skeptic, uh, nobody can know. Soft skeptic, uh, I'm not sure. Nobody can be sure, not sure. Okay. Now, what is next? We have got um, perspectivism. Perspectivism is the belief that truth is found in the combined perspectives of many. 
belief that truth is found in the combined perspectives of many. You, again, you're, pro- you're probably thinking, I see all this all the time. You may even be thinking, this is me. This is what I think. Each one of these represents me to some degree. And that's fine. I mean, that's what that's what we're working towards. We're trying to understand this. We're trying to, I want you to get a grasp of who you are, and then we'll evaluate this and try to figure out which one is the best, which one is the truth. But uh, perspectivism is different than the others and, and so in a very real way because it says, only when you have everybody come together with their truth do we find the complete whole. That is the truth. So it's this mixture, you know, you got to have cake batter and you got you're, you're putting together flour and sugar and vanilla and everything. It's only whenever it all comes together that it's truth. So everybody has an ingredient to truth, but nobody has the only ingredient. Everybody is needed. Now, again, like I said, you might see saying, man, that, that's true, Michael. I mean, that seems right. I mean, this is true in a lot of cases. You got, you got, if you're married, you got your husband and your wife. And normally, whenever you guys come together and you see each other's perspective in whatever issue, controversy, or decision you're making, the best is that combined perspective that makes the decision. The, the woman and the, the female and the male, the personalities, the, the ways in which they think. Now, perspectivism says, well, let's let's take it this way. You've got the Muslims believing something. you got the Christians believing something. you got the Hindus believing something. And all of them are kind of true, you know? All of them are true to some degree. And it's kind of like, it's not necessarily so much all roads lead to Rome, but it's all roads combined lead to Rome. That's the idea here. Um even in Christianity, some people will be this. Maybe you're you're a perspective uh, perspectivist whenever it comes to Christianity, which does make sense to me. And a perspectivist with within Christianity, I'm sorry for. All- 